Hi, I'm Anthony Tormina, and I'm here with Tucson Subaru. Today, I want to talk to you about the 2019 Subaru Ascent. Now, I'm six foot four, so one of the first things I see about this that really makes me feel comfortable is the space. I can adjust this to fit exactly where I need it to be, the right height, and the option to be able to adjust the steering wheel, I tilt, and telescope as well. This is great. This really is. The steering wheel is a perfect size. You have the paddle shifters right on the back and all functions directly in front of you so you really don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel at all. You have Bluetooth accessibility, volume controls for your audio, you can even change the source, uh, voice control, you also have your eyesight features here so I can adjust the eyesight controls for my cruise. Uh, this is very nice. It's a nice touch for them to have gone away from the actual pull handle emergency brake to the parking brake button now. A little bit more simple, it takes up less space and it looks beautiful. Now on this drive today, I think it would be best for us to do a couple of different driving conditions. I'm going to take us out, we'll do some turning radius changes, we'll also uh, test its ability of uh, takeoff from a stop, and then just a little bit of cruise modes as well with the eyesight to see how it adapts with cars in front of us. Here in Tucson, one of the biggest things we have to worry about is the fact that roads, wow, that really takes off. <laughs> roads are a little bit rougher than in most places, so uh, feeling the comfort of the suspension is very important when you're really testing out a vehicle, and this car is impeccable. The symmetrical all-wheel drive comes into play in a lot of areas that you wouldn't expect it to. Uh, we have a lot of sand, rain, those simple things can make a big difference. Here in Arizona, it rains every so often. Monsoon season can be quite a bit more, uh, but when you're talking about spurts of rain after a good month or two of no rain, it can uh, really make the roads slick. So symmetrical all-wheel drive is very important with that. But notice that this car, uh, we are in the premium. Of course, with all a sense, it's going to have the standard eyesight. This does have the option for navigation as well, which is showing on the screen. Uh, what I've noticed here is it also shows me the speed of the road that I'm on directly in the front, right uh, between the cluster here. So I can see a digital speed of exactly how fast I'm going, but it also shows me the speed limit of this road is 45, which is really nice to have right in front of you. Often you're driving, you don't actually know what the speed limit of the road you're on is. So, takeoff is very quick. You notice that power goes straight to the wheels a lot faster than you would expect. Uh, it is a 2.4 liter Boxer 4 engine. We're pretty aware the Boxer 4 engine is very specific to Subaru. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, that's a very nice sounding engine. Of course, it gives you a lower center of gravity. It's really enjoyable to have that uh, less body sway from side to side. really does take off. <laughs> so noticing cars coming up at the side, there actually is a little light that's on the exterior of the side mirror. Now usually you'll see blind spot monitoring in the mirror itself. Subaru has changed that location to be on the exterior in a small square that creates an orange illuminated line that is going to let you know when somebody's in your blind spot on whichever side of the car it's on. If you have your turn signal on, that light is going to flash at you to give you an extra alert. Uh, but it is nice that it's not in the mirror anymore because now you actually have a better comfort of seeing that rather than getting it lost inside that image of what you see in the mirror. Gosh, the power to this vehicle, it just makes you want to put your foot to the pedal and really push. <laughs> But it's so quiet. Now this infotainment system is a third generation infotainment designed by Subaru. Uh, the navigation system is actually designed by TomTom, Tom, so it's very intuitive. It's a lot easier than a vehicle infotainment system you'd usually see with navigation. Uh, you don't have to go through a several list of steps to be able to get the navigation to show you what you need. You can simply input an address by 123 Main Street. It goes straight to it. It's nice. It's a very nice system. 
Uh, keep in mind, you also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard on the Ascent now. Uh, that is going to have the access to be able to show your phone's information directly on the screen. Um, you're also going to have abilities to show your navigation on there as well. So if you have uh, an affinity for your Google Maps or your Apple Maps, you're going to be able to put that directly on your screen here and uh, use whatever map uh, locations you have stored on your phone right on the screen. So it makes it very nice. Notice dual climate control in the front. You also have air control in the rear, and you can control that from the front also. So tri-zone climate control is going to be standard for the vehicle. You have heated seats right here, three modes. Uh, that's great. Auto vehicle hold. This is a new feature for Subaru. AVH is what they call it. So if I'm sitting here to light, which I have right now, I've engaged it. So whenever I let my foot off the brake, it holds the electronic brake on for me until I uh, have the need to go. It'll hold it up to 10 minutes, so it gives your foot a little rest. You're not sitting there having to hold that or put it in the park. Uh, that could be nice when you're sitting at a stoplight. Also, say you're going through a drive through sometimes that takes quite a while to wait. It's nice to have that access rather than having to put it in park and re-engage. I noticed whenever I was waiting at that stoplight, as I was explaining that, it actually beeped to alert me that cars in front of me had started to move. So it gives you a little heads up notification rather than having somebody behind you have to honk. It's going to let you know that cars have now started to go and uh, you might want to start moving as well. That works uh, in tune with the other EyeSight features. You're going to have the access to have uh, lane departure warning and lane sway warning. You're going to have adaptive cruise control and forward collision prevention. This all comes together. This is the third generation EyeSight system. It's been in the market here since 2012 and it's pretty amazing what it's uh, able to do. So I'm going to push this stick over into manual mode and test out these paddle shifters. Right now when I did that, I'm currently going 51 miles an hour and I'm in seventh gear. That's what it's created. So I'm going to go down to six. Still pretty smooth. Go down to five. Let's make it down to four. Wow. Now that really feels the power. What's nice about these paddle shifters is they're night. They're not ginormous. Uh, they fit perfectly behind your fingers, so you can hold onto the steering wheel without them being in the way. But in the event of using them like I am now, my hands fit perfectly where they're supposed to be to be able to paddle shift and not feel uh, clunky or anything like that. It's, it's very ergonomic. So what's nice, they have uh, added a heads-up display for this now. Uh, it's going to be an illumination of different lights and colors directly on the dash that will shine the light up at the windshield. Uh, non-intrusive and this is giving you little uh, notifications about things that are happening for example when I sway over a line it illuminates yellow and flashes on the side of the car that you're actually going over the line at so it lets you know if you uh, might be you know verging out of where you're not supposed to be it just happened again if you heard that illumination there so I didn't have my turn signal on and I went over a dotted line it's very interesting Turning down a, a neighborhood road here, I wanted to test its ability with a little bit more of a sandy condition and also see what this turning radius is like. Oh yeah. So taking this turn here, it's a very tight turn. Wow. There's an unbelievable turning radius. Not what you would expect.